I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. When I stopped by this morning for my Chick-fil-A run, which makes every podcast go better when you can eat what I call affectionately Jesus chicken uh, because the, the Cathy's are such great people. Since it, today's Valentine's Day, and what I didn't realize when I bought these uh, chicken minis, which is what Jace likes, they came in a heart-shaped tin, Jace. Yeah. And so I guess I was just expressing my love for my little brother. Well, so. it gets you in the Valentine spirit, which <laughs> it does. As a typical male, that's helpful, Al. When you when you were eating so. those, did it make you appreciate Missy all the more? Just well, I have breaking news here. Uh oh, so. wait a minute. Uh oh, get the, yeah. hit the, hit the get, get it out. Breaking so news. To set up the breaking news, a few weeks ago, Missy and I went to Los Angeles during duck season. And the three greatest days of duck season this year, I was in Los Angeles and I wasn't duck hunting. But were you I, experiencing FOMO while you were in LA? Well, I did because <laughs> Jay was trying to rub it in and was giving me a play by play of the three spectacular days. So I finally had to just turn my phone off. <laughs> he wasn't doing it in love, he was trying to make you hurt. But I made a Jesus decision and I made a wife decision that. Because my wife, I truly believe she's the biggest Chosen fan that's out there. She knows love. Hard to be number one in anything. She's yeah. the number one Chosen fan. She she watches it almost daily, and she has for years. Because she watches them over and over. I mean, she... Uh, over and over. Ow, she, she, <laughs> she's all about it. She studies her Bible, and then she watches The Chosen, okay. which is great and fantastic. We love it. So we're friends with Dallas and Amanda. Dallas is the... I guess the creator of the chosen, yes. or I guess God created it, but He's using Dallas to put it on in pictures. So we went out there, and I hate to call it a sacrifice, but for me during duck season, because I couldn't lean over to my wife and say, "Well, you better appreciate this sacrifice." I mean, you know, this was like, so I had to just keep my mouth shut. So we watched the first two episodes, and we all know, I'm not ashamed. That's not easy. So we watched mm. the first two episodes of season four <laughs> two weeks before. It came out in theaters. So it, it's out now. It's been out two weeks. And in this spirit of Valentine's Day, my wife and I have a date night tonight. Mm. And now this, this got complicated because what happened was we watched the two episodes. We hung out with the Jenkins in L.A. Then I came back and got back to duck hunting. Well, he sent me a text a couple of days ago and said, I'm interested to see what Missy thinks about episode three. And I was like, oh, there's an episode three out? Because I thought they were just releasing what we saw the first two episodes. But in theaters now, when you go, they have the first three episodes of season four. So this is a three hour. So that intrigued me. Yeah. I, and so Missy's like, well, I got to find somebody to go with me. And I thought, I looked around. She said that we were alone in our house. What am I? <laughs> but she assumed, since I'd already seen the first two episodes, I wouldn't want to go. Yeah. And I said, well, babe, I would love to take you and go see the first three. She's Look like, you. well, you've already seen the first two. I was like, but I'll be with you. And we're watching a story about Jesus. Mr. Romance. How can it get any better than this? Love was in the air. Heart started <laughs> popping. It was great. You didn't even have to give her any fish to get her excited. You did, you just did it exactly. with your charm. So here's what happened. So my lovely wife, she starts trying to figure out when we're going to go. So this is on Saturday. Today is Tuesday. And I we couldn't go that night, Sunday night, Monday night. So I was like, Tuesday night, it's settled. It's a date. So she goes online, which I didn't even know you could do, to buy your tickets. Mm-hmm. And so she's over there fooling around with her phone, and she's like, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? She said, there's not one seat sold in the theater for Tuesday night. I said, well, babe, it's three days from now. People aren't saying, oh, let's. A lot of people just go that night, yeah. So she said, I'll be right back. Uh -oh. Didn't know what that meant. I thought she was going to the bedroom, going to the kitchen. She gets in her car, and she leaves. So I thought. <laughs> 
She's gone. <laughs> so she comes back 30 minutes later, and she has this huge stack of papers, and I wasn't sure what, what that was. I said, what, what did you do, babe? And she said, I bought the entire theater, every <laughs> ticket. So I said, babe, I thought this was a date. She said, it is, but we're inviting all our family and friends. It's a date for 200. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing that tonight, and I'm excited. Well, no, that's cool. We've just bought the theater, bought or the my theater. wife did. And I said, Maybe I? she is the number one fan for The Chosen. That may not be an exaggeration. And uh, I got to the, how much did that? And she said, don't ask. This is a great cause. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my contribution in. Which uh, which theater are you going to? Tinseltown, West Monroe. Well, I got news for you. It's not two hundred tickets. It's three hundred and ninety <laughs> tickets. So, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> what are we gonna do? I thought we was trying to win the world here, buddy. Yeah, I'm. I'm good for it, man. I love it. That's it was what, like, I mean, yesterday that's... I told Lisa, "I go to the store. I'm steak hungry. I want ribeyes, and I want some fillets, and I want them all prime." Ready for some mm. good steak? I'll cook it. So she calls him from the store. She said, "All right, I've got the, I've got the prime fillets, great, but I, and I've got the choice ribeyes." And I said, "Did they not have prime?" And she said, "Oh, they have it, but do you know what that costs?" I said, "Did I say anything to you about cost when I asked you <laughs> to get these steak?" Yeah, but but here, listen, what I said, I don't want to know. I have, I don't care. I want prime ribeye, and I want it here, and I want to be able to put it on my grill. There's some things in life I don't care what it costs. I don't care either. I, my daughter, when she was born with her difficulties that I don't want to talk about too much because I'll get all teary-eyed, but it changed my view of money in that moment because I didn't have any money. I mean, this is before our little duck show took off. And uh, I just realized when they started talking about multiple surgeries and she's going, this is 18 years of of, of a battle. And I just thought, babe, we're going to be in debt the rest of our lives. So yeah. that, that was my initial reaction. Right. And then I followed it with, and I don't care. She said, I don't either. I mean, it's your daughter. You're going to do whatever it takes. So I would say this classifies under that heading of money well spent. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, so are you going to get into this thing or do you want to wait? No, I will. Okay. So I had an interesting text that I want to ask you all about because we have a guest today. And I thought there was super a super excited about our guest. I thought this was a theme since since our guest is, I would say, a relatively new Christian. Um, so we told you the story a few podcasts ago about one of our warriors that I met at the Mighty Oaks thing that I did with Chad Roby's show. Yep. And he sent me a text because I bought his fishing trip. He takes people fishing. And I bought it, so we started this a relationship. This is like the, the Special Forces guy, right? Yeah, Special yeah. Forces guy. And he sent me a text that I'm ready, and I thought he meant for me to come fishing, and he meant he is ready to start following Jesus. And once I told the story, it was awesome because he came over with his family because he asked me to baptize him, and you can go back and listen to that podcast. And I was like, well, look, it's not about who baptizes you and all that. I was trying to kind of make sure that he was getting yeah. this. Right. And, uh, oh, he convinced me when I said, read the book of John and ask yourself two questions. You know, who is Jesus to you and what did he claim? And so he sent me basically one of the best outlines of the book of John that I've ever seen, hmm. which I responded, come over this weekend. I think you're ready. <laughs> and so he brought his family and he brought his pastor who had been trying to get him in Jesus for years. But I just wanted to bring this up because, you know, once you surrender that's just the beginning. It, it and, and we've spent a lot of time, me and him, talking about it's not just what Jesus saves you from, which is awesome. He saves us from ourself and from our past and from our sins. Ass hurts, all of it. Death. And I mean, all this is great. But he saves us to something. Correct. And so, you know, we are now to be the voice of Jesus. We're ambassadors. We're members of the kingdom. We're 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 to go out and be Jesus in this world. And and that's the best defense yeah. for you know keeping your life clean because mo most people when they're new Christians they're just trying not to do wrong. I think we all remember this, but eventually you realize that he's called us to be something, to do something. And if you're out there proclaiming Jesus as Lord and you're trying to look for ways 
to help the kingdom, like my lovely wife did. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. It went from a date to affecting the community for the positive. Yeah. So the, I think those are radical things you do. But anyway, he sent me a question, and I wanted y'all to check me because I did this off the top of my head. But he said, Bible question. This is this morning, 30 minutes before our podcast. John 13, 26 and 27. Why did Satan enter Judas when he took the bread from Jesus? Well, y'all remember that? We discussed that yep. a couple podcasts ago. At the supper. And he said, Jesus, Judas took actions to his thoughts that Jesus already knew he had. I'm just confused because it said Satan entered Judas at that point. Did Judas not know he was going to betray Jesus, and that's when Satan took over? Or since Jesus knew it was going to happen, he gave Judas permission or encouragement to do what he needed to do for the crucifixion to take place. I want to be mad at Judas for betraying Jesus, and I am, but it sort of started the one thing that had to happen for Jesus to be crucified and resurrected. Mm. Thoughts, sorry for the long text, but I've been thinking about this all night. So I said, it's a very good question. And I put, there's three forces at work at all times. The spiritual forces of evil, number one. The spiritual forces of evil are dark powers. And I put Ephesians 6, 12 and 13. Yep. Number two, our own idols. And I put anything we worship above the true God, good or bad. I put the James 1, 12, where it says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. Each one is tempted by one his own evil desire. He's dragged away and enticed. So then I put under that number two. So the evil power sees on opportunities we provide when we become selfish or try to change the true God. Also put James 3, 13 through 18. Then number three, so you got your uh, spiritual force of evil, your own idols or selfish ambition. Then number three, God created us in in his own image, Genesis 1. And then I went to Colossians 1, where, and it says we are to worship and reflect God. That's why Jesus came. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. But notice the new creation we become when we surrender to him. And I put Colossians 3, 1 through 11, where it says, as new creatures, we reflect the image of God. Correct. So, and also said, note Romans 7, 21, 25, which is that conversation where it says, I find this law at work. Whenever I want to do good, evil is right there with me. And the one you worship, the one you feed, and the one you declare wins, you know, this battle between our old self and new self. But the victory is in Jesus. So that's basically what I what I gave him. And then I put this little caveat that we did in the podcast. I said, but remember, Peter was referred to as Satan as well by Jesus, Matthew 16, right. 23, Luke 22. And Jesus knew Peter would respond to his grace. That's when he said, remember, uh, Satan is asked to sift you as wheat, but I, I'm praying for you. And when you come back, that's in Luke 22. So I just put, look, we all have a chance, Judas, Peter, all of us, to respond to God's grace when we mess up. Peter chose wisely. Judas chose to quit and take his own life. So that was basically my answer. No, I agree. And I think the moment where it says this, I think Judas is on the fence about what he's going to do. And in this moment, he makes a decision to cross over. All of us at some point in our lives make a decision about who we're going to yeah. serve. And I think it, you know, we get to, in his case, we get to see his life when I have, most people, only you know that moment that you yeah. had. So, yeah. No, John 13, about. John 13, two tells us too that, that there, the process had already begun. I mean, this wasn't like Satan entering an innocent person. Yeah. You know, that, that's not, I mean, he doesn't just take over without you yielding. I mean, that's, I think that's important for us to recognize. I told y'all when we were doing this tax act that I want to do a sermon called, can you wait three days? Because, you know, Peter waited three days after he betrayed Jesus yeah. and he saw the Lord resurrected. Judas took his own life. And if he just would have waited three days, maybe he could have turned it around. So, can, yeah. I mean, that, I think that'd be a sermon. Can you wait three days? Oh, yeah. You, you know? Yeah. But in this, yeah, I love that. I mean, in this moment, though, I think that when Satan enters, I mean, uh, I was going to say John 13, two says that the devil had already, Satan had already prompted him. Exactly. Yeah. The evening meal was in progress. And the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to, uh, 
betray Jesus. So that prompting had already occurred. And we've mentioned here before, you look at that passage in James about the nature of sin. It says each one is dragged away and enticed by his own evil desires. And then it gives a progression of that. Of, and then when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. That is the picture here. There's He has yeah. an evil desire prompted by Satan. And then he's whatever mulling it over, gives into that, makes the decision, I'm going to do it. And then when he received the reward that he, what what drew him to do it in the first place, he didn't even want it. And then in the end, he ends up killing himself, which is, by the way, the nature of sin. That's right. This was, a that's, good thing for him to remember. When Jesus, this priest, had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins himself, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool because, and the, and the man you were working with, Jace, by one sacrifice, he, God, has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. He needs to understand all of his sins and mistakes and whatever is gone and he just puts his faith in Jesus now and he's well, being made holy. There's even mistakes in that, but it's not counted against him yeah. because of his position. Right. He needs to thank that. That's that, right. That's Hebrews chapter 10. That's good. So uh, we're going to take a break. And on the other side of the break, we have a guest here with us today. We're super excited about her being on the podcast. And she has had uh, experience like what we talked about at some point fairly recently. And so we're going to let her tell a little bit about her story. So let's take a break. And then I'll introduce our guest when we come back. One of our sponsors uh, that's helped me a lot and hopefully it's helping our listeners is Get Liver Help. What do you think about that, Jay? Well, it's made me realize that the liver is the umpire of the body organs. When you hear about it, you got a problem. (laughs) (laughs) It's like an offensive lineman, right? (laughs) You really never know there's a problem. Do I have a liver? Oh, we have a problem. Oh, I have a liver. I need help. (laughs) It's a great point, and yet it's very important, just as an umpire and offensive lineman is. Uh, The latest data from the American Heart Association indicates that adults with fatty liver, because that's what happens if this fat in your liver is not good, three and a half times more likely to have heart failure than those who don't have it. And there's about 100 million Americans with fatty liver. And I have to say, every time we do this ad, I think about that fatty liver usually goes with fatty everything else. So we know how we get there. And I'm speaking from my own experience. You put on weight, and there are reasons why that happens. And it helps to be able to help your body and help your liver uh, to lose some of that weight. Many people are at risk. Everything gets thrown at your liver. Uh, It is that uh, filter for your body. Uh, And those of us who have had struggles with it, and I have as well, sluggish fatty liver, uh, can make us gain weight and lose energy. So you think of it only if you're already overweight, but it doesn't help you when your liver is already there. Your liver uh, has over 500 key functions every day. And so we want you to help your liver. Liver Health Formula is the solution. I've taken this product. It has helped me to get my liver enzyme numbers back where they're supposed to be. It's all natural. It contains 11 proven botanicals, and they've done this clinically, that help recharge and protect your liver. So if you're looking to ignite your fat-burning metabolism, boost your energy, and transform how you look and feel, try Liver Health Formula. Receive a free bottle of blood sugar formula to reduce your sugar cravings when you order today. Try Liver Health Formula by going to getliverhelp.com slash unashamed to get that free bonus gift. Getliverhelp.com slash unashamed. Welcome back, um, and welcome to Megan Patrick, to welcome, the unashamed. To <laughs> yeah, to the unashamed set. Megan is a, a singer and songwriter, mm-hmm. very talented person. Thank you. And she's wearing camo in the <laughs> in the lair. How did you know? How did you know to fit in? You're a hunter, though, right? I, I am. Yeah. Um, I and I and actually, the duck hunting is is quickly become my my favorite thing. That I think between 
ducks and turkey. Those are my two favorite There's things to hunt. There's still hope for the country. <laughs> Bill has been inspired. Yep. Dad, been my, inspired. my first successful hunt ever was was a duck hunt, and that was pretty much it for me. I, yeah, I shot a, a nice Drake Mallard, and I was out with a bunch of my guys, and it was a shooting light just just started and there's a single come in they're like all right megan this is you and i just said god don't let me miss this bird <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i didn't and then um yeah i mean they showed me how to how to clean them and breast them out we cooked them and just that that whole experience the camaraderie of of the duck camp and yeah. everything i just i loved it that's what that's what why wow, we love it is it for mm-hmm. these just summed up my a, whole life good, in 30 <laughs> seconds it's just a good text uh-oh peter <laughs> yeah. was praying and God sent him a message. He saw something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. Here comes a movie screen. Peter's looking up. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals. Moose, elk, rabbit. He's, squirrel, he's adding in the uh, four footers, Four-footers. As well as reptiles of the earth. Uh-oh, Miss Singer. Birds of the air was on the movie screen. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Marching orders. Surely not, Lord. He said, I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time coming out of heaven. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. Whacking and stacking ducks is biblical. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Did I, you I know believe that, it. <laughs> Listen, I believe That's it. When you, when you watch the sun come up in a blind, I, there, it's hard to deny. Yeah, our it's, it's hard to, to deny God's greatness. Ducks, uh, God said, hey, I made those ducks. Whack them and stack them. Mm-hmm. Phil had a heckler at an event one time because he always reads that because mm-hmm. he, you know, we would do duck call seminars or we would do, I guess we still do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes our audiences wouldn't necessarily be Christian people. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you're up there blowing duck calls and Phil had a heckler one time. They were like, those poor ducks. And they were just hollered at him. <laughs> Phil's like, I got orders from headquarters. <laughs> Acts chapter 10. Whack a no, mistake. Hey. So, so Megan, it's, as you'll both appreciate this, she is from Canada. Oh, I saw that in the bio. And She's I said, from oh, Canada. That's where all the mallard ducks are coming from. Mostly. That's right. We send them down for you. I'm telling you. So dad said, because you know, there are always people at events that will say, you know, Phil for president. He said, well, if I'm president... All the foreign aid is going to Canada <laughs> to grow more ducks. So yeah, hey, that's, that's funny. That's yeah. you should do a song of some kind of O Canada, but make it about duck hunting. You know, yeah. O Canada. You might be onto something there. Hey. I could, I can do that. Jace yeah. does the opening line uh, from uh, the Canadian national I'm anthem. Not sure, where that got started. In I my don't life, think you know but... any words past O Canada. No, right? but I, I've been doing it since <laughs> I was. <laughs> A teenager, like when the ducks would really just be on the move, like the migration would start, I would mm-hmm. I would get so excited that I would like go into the living room where all my family was and I would go, Oh Canada <laughs> And I'd I rub it. my hands together and I'd be like, We're gonna get them tomorrow. That was <clears throat> so I then had, I got I had in. no idea Canada was getting so much praise all the way down here. Oh, it's Louisiana. like we're constantly we love Canada because that's where the ducks go. Well, you know what's crazy is so then I start this treasure hunting adventure. In the last two years, I have found multiple Canadian coins. Uh, I found a rare coin from Canada. I was in Maryland of all places, and it was a picture of a beaver on mm-hmm. the back of it, and it was a rare coin worth about a thousand dollars. It was actually made before Canada was even a country, which I'm not sure how that happened. But for the uh, episode, I just couldn't help it because I was so excited, and it was like a, a Canadian large scent. So I just looked at the ca- the camera, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> Canada." <laughs> We stand on the guard rest for thee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no lo- Our own native land. Way, That's right. There's a constant stream of individuals coming from Canada, driving all the way down here in Louisiana to be baptized. Off the That's podcast. true. Yeah. A That's lot beautiful. of podcasts. It's a steady stream of them. That's and the awesome. show, uh, the little duck show we did, mm-hmm. was hugely popular. 
in Canada. Oh yeah, up there for sure. it was on the History Channel. Well, what, what do they have guys, to do? do you guys understand how cool I am to all my hunting buddies back home right now for being you're here? here? I have never been cooler <laughs> in my life. <laughs> you're here. You're I'm in here. the lair. Well, oh yeah. You can't pick, you know, where you're born. It just happens. Mm -hmm. But I just looked at Canada. You know, the weather. I'm like, what can you do in Canada? Well, uh, um, you better figure out fun things to do in the winter because you're going to spend a lot of time in it. Um, I was a I was a competitive snowboarder for a lot of years. Because um, what else can you do? Yeah, I mean you can Snow's ice fish. Snows everywhere. Yeah, you the ducks snowmobile. leave. Yep, yeah. ducks leave. So yeah, pretty much ice fishing, snowboarding, skiing. That's pretty much it. We talk a lot uh, on our podcast, Jace, about uh, pro life. And because it's it's probably the most um, defining sort of cultural line going on in our world today, because you know you got the pro they call it pro choice, but you have abortion versus pro life, and so people tend to kind of line up one way or the other. Obviously, we're all pro life. It's interesting because we talk about it in different ways. Lisa and I deal more with the abortion side because that's part of her story. I feel like you and Missy more from the fostering. Like yeah. continuation side of things, right? Well, I mean, a lot of kids are born amongst chaos. Yeah. And uh, part of breaking the legacy of brokenness, people of God have to move in who treasure life and show people that life is sacred and precious and that every life matters. And so, uh, you know, we do a lot in that world. And it's always amazing. These little kids are just pure with personalities and uh it's it's convicting just to be able to have a part and give them a safe happy place to be while they're getting started and so we recognize that even in the womb and so one of our uh sponsors newer sponsors uh that's doing supporting our podcast is called Preborn, uh and they reminded us that you know a baby's heart begins to beat at just three weeks which is pretty amazing in the womb. So you can tell that that's the idea of life. Even before a woman realizes for sure she's pregnant, that heart begins to beat. So uh, this Valentine's week, you can share heartbeats. A heartbeat is a baby's only defense in the womb. At five weeks, a baby's heartbeat can be heard on ultrasound. And that's where preborn steps in. Rescuing 200 babies every day from abortion simply by providing a mother with a free ultrasound and allowing her to hear her child's heartbeat and see their perfectly formed body in the womb. Because that makes all the difference. By six weeks, their eyes are forming. By 10 weeks, a baby is able to suck his thumb or her thumb. Preborn needs our help to save these precious souls. For just $28, you could be the difference between life and death of a baby. If you become a monthly sponsor, you'll receive stories and ultrasound pictures of the lives that you helped rescue. All gifts are tax deductible. And 100% of your gift goes towards saving babies. To donate, just dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250 baby. Or you can donate securely at preborn.com slash unashamed. That's preborn.com slash unashamed. Check them out. So tell me, tell me about the, the snowboarding because you were really good, right? I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, for a long time, that was that was my big dream. I, I competed all through high school, and uh, my senior year of high school, I was warming up uh, at a competition, and needless to say, I was reckless <laughs> in my younger days, and um, I went into a jump really aggressively, a lot faster than I should have, and when I hit the jump, um, it kind of shot me straight up a, a lot more than I thought it would, and so when I went to rotate, I overcorrected, and if, if this is my head and this is my board, I went like this and I landed. Ooh. So I snapped my collarbone, dislocated my shoulder, broke my back, severe compression Ooh. fracture all in my lower back, um, really bad concussion. I, I was lucky to walk, to be honest. I mean, the doctor told me I, I should have been paralyzed. And, um, and you were a senior in high school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that looking back, you know, faith wasn't a part of my life then, but that was certainly one of those moments where, you know, God was really looking out for me. Um, because that was a, uh, that was kind of the catalyst where everything, my whole life kind of changed course yeah. and I sort of changed my focus more towards music. It was a big part of my recovery. I mean, I was laid up. I couldn't even get up and go to the bathroom by myself for months and I was 
just severely depressed. I had all of a sudden all these big dreams I had just felt like they got ripped away from me. And so I, I really, um, I, I turned to, to music and songwriting a lot during that time. And when I came out on the other side of that recovery, I, I had kind of a new new dream. New gig. Yeah. yeah. So how long was it before you left Canada and came to Nashville? Because I'm assuming you went to Nashville to like, all right, give this a go, right? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, went to, I went to McGill University first. That was the deal I'd made with my parents. You know, they, they wanted me to go to school and I wanted to compete. And once the, the competing dreams had kind of been shot, I, um, I agreed to go to school and I studied music in school in, in Montreal. I did actually end up going back to snowboarding for a year after my first year, mostly just because I I didn't really want to be in school, but I, I needed to do something. And a lot of it, I think, for me was just facing the fear of getting back on my board. Um, like, I, f I felt like I had kind of taken the coward's way out in a sense. I felt like, well, I had this bad injury and then I just quit. And I kind of just needed to get back on just to know that I could. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, that was just kind of something for me. But music at that point had really taken over. I started playing in bands and, you know, writing my own music and touring and kind of getting a taste of that. And um, I ended up moving back to where I grew up for a little bit. And I had a bluegrass band. And that was, you know, we, we did made a couple of our own records independently. We did our own tours. And that's when I realized, like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so I dropped out of school, which wasn't my parents' favorite phone call. But <laughs> they were they were supportive. They, they said, you know, my dad said, look, I, if that's if that's what you want to do, then then do it all the way. You know, yeah. don't do it halfway. He's like, I, I support whatever, you. Whatever it's worth, you're the best looking duck killer. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got I don't, that I don't, I don't look Go. this cute in the blind usually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't put the full face on for the ducks, yeah. just for you fellas. When I go to do events, I always tell audiences because I have a picture of from my family. And I say, you know, my wife says I'm the best looking Robertson. Everybody laughs when I say that. <laughs> I said, but if you look at this picture, it's really a low bar. It's <laughs> not really that hard. <laughs> you know, so you stand out a bunch of uh, ugly men. So. Well. so did you start with country music? Uh, I mean, you said bluegrass. Now, look, yeah. I'm not. I mean, my wife got me on uh, contemporary. I love bluegrass. Uh, Christian mm -hmm. music about five years ago. So I've entered a tunnel, which has been awesome. Yeah. But. I, I've honestly, I, I just love music. Um, I love all genres and I, I've studied a little bit of everything. I've played in different bands. Um, but for me, well, I always joke and say that, that bluegrass was the gateway drug to country music for me. Okay. Bluegrass came first and, um, you know. What is bluegrass? Is it just, is it fiddles? and it, Yeah, uh, fiddles. It's it's all like a lot of like acoustic string instruments. So banjos, fiddles, mandolin, banjos, guitar, yeah. Like finger picking, chicken picking, that kind of stuff. It's known it's, for it's real big, fast big harmonies. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of fast yeah. pace, really big, beautiful harmonies, and very, very melodic. Um, I mean, it's a lot of it's mountain music. Um, mountain music. That's mm -hmm. what I. Like. Well, how do you do without a band? Like if I said, "Well, sing us a verse or two or something." Yeah, I can sing anything you want. Yeah. Well, we need right now? To, we I need like to do that. that. Well, well the reason gonna I'm that. asking, we're, we're I, definitely going to have her sing before. We do I'm that. at the reason I'm asking is because you don't sound like you're from Canada. Uh, well, I think you know you you spend enough time around people, you start picking up how they talk. And when I moved to Nashville, all of my friends were very southern. My hus my husband is very southern, so I've definitely picked up. I've got kind of this this mutt accent. I think now I, I still say a, and there will be a few was, words. Well, you hadn't said that since you've been here. <laughs> a. Um, my husband always makes fun of the way I say beg. I guess that's very Canadian. Um, but you know, all my friends are just really southern, so I I've picked up a little bit of everything. It's kind of okay. a subconscious thing, I guess. Because you sing country music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I think I, that's a good teaser. So, so I, I, we watched. Uh, they sent me a couple of videos, a mm -hmm. couple of your music videos, and they were both great, and mm -hmm. um, as well as your "I Am Second. So that's how we yeah. kind of connected to you mm -hmm. because Angie, who's here today, uh, we've done some "I Am Second stuff, mm -hmm. and um, but the one of them, the there's a God and a good man. Mm -hmm. So it just really intrigued me and, and teared me up because you start the music video with what looks to be your actual baptism. Yes. And so I'm assuming that was a pastor or somebody that was baptizing you. Yes. Um, so, uh, I call him coach because he is actually my husband's high school football coach. And so, um, coach Tillman, uh, he actually also married us. Um, just, and then you there were a lot of wedding stuff in the video. Yeah. Um, well, 
to me, the two things were very connected because I would say that the the two most important and incredible days of my life were the day I got married and the day I was baptized. Um, you know, they're 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 sacred and they're things that changed my life. And when I wrote God and a Good Man, it was I had told Coach when you know when we were preparing for the wedding, I had told him that I'd never been baptized. I wasn't I wasn't raised Christian. It just wasn't really a, a part of how I grew up. Um, but I had told him that I wanted to be baptized, but I, I wanted to be ready. I wanted to be sure. And he said, well, you just let me know when you're ready. And um, I was driving to go right with a couple of my friends. And I don't know, I just I just had this feeling. I was like, you know what? I think I'm I'm ready. And I started thinking about and I called my husband first and I told him and he he was so happy. He was like tearing up and he was really excited. And and I started thinking about all of the ways that that my faith and and my husband have, have saved me in so many ways. You know, the way I came to God was when he pulled me out of a really abusive relationship that almost took my life. Yeah. And um sorry. Um <clears throat> And so, you know, my husband had to, he had to do a lot of work fixing a heart that he didn't break and, and teaching me that, that relationships can be beautiful and safe yeah. and loving, um, without strings attached. It's a and, mean world out there. Yes, sir, it is. And, um, you know, and, and my faith did the same thing. And I'll say this, God and my husband have one thing in common, which is infinite patience for me. <laughs> yeah. And um, hey, that's word for us all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It seems to go hand in hand. Yes. You know, with and, people of faith, you know. Yeah, and I, you know, I I started thinking about all the similarities between those two relationships and the way they've just made me a better person and um and I wanted to write a song to to honor God and my relationship with God and my relationship with my husband and how intertwined they are and so that was the inspiration and and it came from the day I decided I was ready to be baptized and that song felt like a gift from God you know I I I said hey I'm ready to do this I'm ready to declare my faith and he said here you go <laughs> i love that you opened with it and then the whole song when you're singing it and you're of course you're seeing all the scenes of getting married and all that but your feet are in the water mm -hmm. just sitting there by that creek and it, it reminded me so much of the area down at uh, dad's house that so many have mm -hmm. you know succumbed to jesus mm -hmm. and and us sitting on that bank yeah. watching all those new births and so it really took me back and that's why yeah. it touched me let's uh, take another break And then the other one I saw was Praying Right, mm -hmm. uh, which I, which you also sing on your I Am Second Testimony, mm -hmm. which is so powerful. Thank and you. the lyrics of it are so powerful because it's so much where people are when they first find mm -hmm. Christ because you're like, okay, I found you, but I don't really know how to act. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. And Jace described that a little bit in the in the open mm -hmm. about the guy he's been talking to. It's, yep. And it's so true trying to figure out exactly what Jesus wants us to do now, mm -hmm. uh, which is very, very powerful. So I thought that was another great song. Did, yeah. you, did you write that? I did write that song. Right after um, you became a Christian, or was that before? It was, it, well, it was before I was baptized. I would say it was kind of at, at the beginning the process, of my journey, right. you know. So when I when I made the decision to move to Nashville, you know, as I said, I was coming out of this really horrible relationship. And, you know, I, I remember I, I had finally left him but I was struggling. I was, I mean, I was broke. I had, I wasn't doing anything with my music. I was living in this basement apartment where he had abused me and just, I felt like I was trapped in my own personal hell, to be honest. Yeah. And I remember one night, you know, and, and he unfortunately was, was harassing me and my anxiety was so bad. I like, I felt like I couldn't go anywhere without wondering, looking over my shoulder. And I came home and I just was so desperate to feel safe. And I, and I was like, well, <laughs> I guess some people pray, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll try that. And I had no idea what I was doing because my only understanding of, of Christianity or faith was unfortunately, you know, this, this Hollywood um, stereotyped version of, of a lot of tail wagging and rules and, you know, and, and all that. And, but I just thought, well, I'm just going to try and maybe, maybe it's too late. <laughs> You know, maybe he's up there like, hmm, well, look who decided to show up finally, yeah. you know, at the ripe yeah. age of 26, yeah. you know. You've and been made perfect. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Perfect. And I, I started, I just started praying and I, and I just kind of said, I don't, 
I don't know if you're there. I don't know if I'm even worthy of your love or your forgiveness. But just pull, just get me out of here. Yeah. I just want to feel safe again. I want, I want to love myself again. I want to respect myself again. And welcome um, aboard, girl. <laughs> thank welcome you. Aboard. And and ever since that moment, and and I think the most beautiful thing that I learned, you know, first and foremost, and that drew me to Jesus and to my faith was all it takes is a willingness. And they say yeah. just a mustard seed, right? Yeah. That's yeah. all it takes. And um, when I started praying, I just, I saw everything in my life change. It, it led me to to pack up and leave and move to Nashville. The very first night I moved to Nashville, I went out to uh, go see this show. And I was, I met these two girls, Lainey Wilson, who's actually from not far from here. Really? And uh, yeah, she's from Baskin. Oh yeah. Um, thank you. You'd have to be from <laughs> North Louisiana to know where Baskin is. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. And, um, and her roommate at the time, Casey Tyndall, and, and it was like God said, here's the best friends you're ever going to need. And two women of faith who were a huge part of, of, bringing me into into my faith and my journey and you know I can't tell you how many hours and hours were spent at Lainey's kitchen table me just asking questions and and them answering my questions and having that conversation with me and um you know I just everything even though I still had a lot of questions I knew that my life had gotten better when I yeah. started believing and, and I started asking God for guidance. And I, you know, I, I was sitting with with Casey and Lainey. And I remember when I first moved, I was almost like ashamed. Like I didn't want to tell them that this was a new thing for me, that I didn't know the scripture and I didn't, I never went to church. I'd never been baptized. You know, I, I wanted to go to church, but I was convinced I was going to walk through the doors and burst into flames or something, or everybody was going to look at me and be like, well, she ain't been here before, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I, and I said, well, I, I just don't know how I can say that I believe when I still have questions. And they said, well, that's that's a, a lifetime exactly. thing is, yeah, is having is the questions. Journey. That's yeah. the journey. And so that led me to, to write Praying Right because I think what was so beautiful to me and comforting to me was knowing that me being so new to this and Lainey and Casey having from from the time they were babies, you know, being and having it ingrained in them that we all still had questions and we all still wondered if we were falling short all the time and, and wondering if we were worthy and, and all of that. And, um, so I wrote praying, right. And it's, it's been an incredible song because there's just, I know that it's touched so many people and I believe God gave me the gift of, of, of music and of songwriting and, and I'm meant to help people with yeah. that. Yeah. No doubt. Absolutely. And I think as I see it, when you were on your knees praying to a God, you weren't sure as an own, it was unknown to you. Mm-hmm. To me, when I see those two friends, I'm thinking, I think God answered your prayer there. Yes, he, he he's really good at organizing mm-hmm. interactions of people where people can yeah. hear Jesus. It's And when I look back, like I said, I look back through my life through the lens of my faith, and I see all the times that he was protecting me and, and guiding me, whether I was ready to acknowledge him or not. Yeah. Um, and there's just, it, it's so the, everything is just so perfectly woven together in only only a way that he can. And, you know, that culminated with me being baptized. You know, I, I wanted to be baptized in the river because for me, a lot of my my early days of my journey were a lot of my praying happened in blinds and stands and, you know, yeah, in yeah. the outdoors because it's it's hard to deny the existence and greatness of God when, exactly. <laughs> when you're out up. in his creation. You got the revelation, <laughs> the first one, because he said this scene in creation. Mm-hmm. Second revelation was this. So you saw it. You remember first. being ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the apostle Paul said, because it is. The gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, a righteousness from God is revealed. How to be right. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Once you cross that, once you cross that, there mm. march on and yeah. the beauty part is it was the hebrews 5 that says jesus is not ashamed to call us mm-hmm. his brother and sister yeah i thought about mm-hmm. this verse when you were talking and because that's what we do as disciples of jesus because every day 
is a new set of challenges and mm-hmm. difficulty. And so we just, you know, we get our firepower from this inspired word that mm-hmm. God wrote us. But I thought about when you were talking about that unlimited patience, you know, in First Timothy <laughs> 1 15, Paul said, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst because Paul, you know, could make a case for his previous life <laughs> being the worst. I mean, he was killing other Christians. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. It's very inspiring. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You hear that Mm -hmm. in your story, but then you read something that he wrote hundreds of years ago Mm -hmm. and you're like, wow. Yeah. (laughs) This is why, this is why Jesus came for us. Mm -hmm. So um, we've had uh, Rhett Walker's been on the podcast. Uh, Shane and Shane were on here. They sang for us. Would you sing for us? I would love to. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take a break, and while we do that, we're gonna get Megan get her guitar, and when we come back. We're gonna hear her beautiful voice. Uh, so let's take a break. So the day that I wrote this song, I came in. I had this idea to write a song called Praying Right, which was basically just coming from this perspective of someone who is new to faith and kind of being like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Um, and the the night after I, I'd written that song, I was supposed to go play a writer's round in, in Nashville. And um, I had told you earlier, you know, Lainey and Casey had become two of my first friends. And, and I was really excited to, to show them this song because they had kind of inspired me to have the courage to write this song. And for whatever reason, I've never gone to a writer's round and played a song that I wrote that day <laughs> because usually, you know, you want to learn it, practice it. But I just felt really compelled. I have to play this song tonight. And so I played the first song of the round and I was introducing this song and I was nervous because not only had I ne- I'd never even spoken of my faith <laughs> openly, let alone sang a whole song about yeah. it. And, you know, I, I introduced it and I played the song and it was like you could hear a pin drop in the room. And, and to get that kind of response in a bar in Nashville is hard to come by. Yeah. And I finish the song and I look over to my left and there's Lainey and Casey standing on the side of the stage crying. And I had no idea they were even there. And uh-huh. they they were had been walking, they were going to a hockey game and their our friend was like, oh, Megan's playing down the road. Let's go pop in and say, hey. And they happened to come in right as I went to play this song. And to me, if that isn't God, that's right. I don't know what it is. It's and that, like an affirmation. It, it was an like affirmation. That. I felt like of him saying, you're doing great. I hear you. And I want you to keep keep doing what you're doing. Um, and so, and I think the beauty about this song is that what's been cool for me, I mean, I write songs because I want people to feel understood and seen. Um, and this song seems to have resonated with everyone from new Christians to people who don't even know how they feel about it to people who have followed Jesus their whole lives. Um, so this is one I'm really proud of. Um, this is called Praying Right. Friend called me Sunday and asked me if I wanted to go. Pardon me, wanted to, and pardon me, didn't know. Can I wear my boots and jeans? Will everybody stare at me like they know how long it's been? I've got questions. Cause I've been treating my soul like an old run-down shack All my demons living rent-free on my back So when I walk in with all my sins I know I won't blend in Can you forgive me? I've got questions can I sing Amazing Grace with last night's whiskey on my breath? Do I deserve your love with a little bit of faith I've got left? And 
Am I saying the right things? Am I getting through? Is it too late to turn to you? I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying to find the light. Tell me, am I praying right? I can't quote the verse, but I heard there's one that says It all have fallen short, so maybe I still have a chance Cause it's heavy on me, the shame I feel for not giving thanks for my blessings Am I worthy of an answer? I've got questions can I sing amazing grace with last night's whiskey on my breath? Do I deserve your love with a little bit of faith I've got left? Am I saying the right things? Am I getting through? Is it too late to turn to you? I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying to find the light. Tell me, am I praying right? Do I have to hear my knees and raise my hands in church on Sunday? Or do you still hear what's in my heart when I'm praying in my own way? Can I sing amazing grace with last night's whiskey on my breath? Do I deserve your love with a little bit of faith I've got left? Am I saying the right things? Am I getting through? Is it too late now to turn to you? I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying to find the light. Tell me, am I praying right? Tell me, am I praying right? <laughs> I couldn't help but think about your your father dating back his, his brother. He was the father of all who live in tents and raise livestock. His brother, which is his bloodline, is in your blood, girl. His name was Jubal, and he was the father of all who play the harp and the lyre. He made music. You're kin to him, Jubal. <laughs> That's back bring, to Genesis 5 is where he's at. Father, your, that father, your spiritual father is God. But he put you in some pretty good company way, way back. <laughs> it does let us know that that your gift is definitely from God. It wasn't for everybody. That's right. And so That's to right. use that now like you're doing is amazing. Well when you sang that yeah. when you sang that song, I thought about no matter how many promises uh God has made, they're always yes in Christ. And uh look, we all got our baggage and our sinful lives and our past. The the goal now, because we were talking about this before you sang, is uh, you know, how do you how do you sing country music and and do the Lord's will? It, it reminds us of our, you know, our background. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil and I would go out. He started it. We're doing duck call seminars, and you know, just the crowd is not living for the Lord. And mm -hmm. people would say, if y'all share your faith, it's going to hurt your business. Mm -hmm. And uh, it made me think the only time I was ever in Canada, Willie and I was asked to speak at a country music concert. Mm -hmm. And think Woodstock for country music in Canada. There were thousands of people there and mm -hmm. it was outside on a hill and so we told jokes and everybody was laughing. Of course, everybody was drinking. I'm pretty sure we were one of the few uh, sober people there. And and we were nervous because we had already decided this is who we are. And so we gave a little three to five minute Jesus speech mm -hmm. about 
who we were. And uh, it was interesting during those three to five minutes because people were like, do I set down my beer? Or, you know, because it was, it made everybody right. a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. and nervous, but then everybody uh, erupted at the end. Mm -hmm. And so my advice, because uh, you're pretty new to the faith, mm -hmm. is I think authenticity wins out at yeah. the I end agree. of the day. You well, know, I think I think also, you know, it's it's interesting because, you know, there's there's a side of me that says, okay, I shouldn't do these things because of my faith, but it's. I also, I don't really want to yeah. <laughs> as much anymore. The issue isn't so much me fighting my, my own urges or needs. It's figuring out how to, how to kind of regroup and exist in, a, in an industry, in a world that, that I, has a lot of tendencies that I'm trying to move away from. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, like you said, um, authenticity wins and, and, yeah, you know, I, I I recognize that there there may be some audiences that I that I lose for, you know, being my my hundred percent true self. But it's kind of like it's like relationships. Like if you can't love me for who I am, then you don't then you don't love me. And you, I don't I don't need you in my life. I'm gonna get rid of you and make room for the people that can and will. And so, and the, I've just been in this industry for a long time. I've been doing this for a long time, and I I've seen the ugliest, darkest sides of it, and they are ugly and they are dark. And yeah. I don't want any part of it. It's not It's not really worth it. And I have to believe that there's a way for me to chase this dream and, and exist in this in this world that um, without, without, you know, demoralizing myself or feeling... And I still figure that out every day. I've by no means got it figured out. But yeah. um, I do... I have got this kind of newfound conviction of like, you know what, if you are true to yourself, then the right people will follow you and, and they will love you and, and, and God will, will bless you and reward you right. for that. And doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And yeah. I have to remind myself of what my prayers are to God. And when I pray to God and I, and I'm asking him to work on me, I, I pray for him to, to give me good character. I pray mm -hmm. for him to help me be a better person, a good person, someone that, that he can be proud of, that my friends and family yeah. can be proud of. And you don't become a person of strong character without difficulty and without struggle. And so, you know, I have to remind myself that he's not uh, he's not testing me or bringing me struggle to hurt me or because he doesn't love me. He does it because he does love me. That's right. Yeah, exactly. That's and right. and you got to remember this one thing. I mean, I thought I was done with country music, but you just picked up a new fan. <laughs> Because <laughs> those one. two songs, <laughs> look, those two songs were inspirational and they were awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. And so we're very proud to have you here today. Oh, Megan, you're I'm a bright light, here. and uh, I'm glad you came to shine it here for Unashamed Donuts. Megan Patrick is her name. Check her out. Uh, I am second. She has a fantastic uh, film on there about her life. Some of what she shared mm -hmm. earlier in the podcast is well worth checking out, as well as everything that they're doing over at I am second. So, Megan, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. All right. You picked up some new fans. I love it. All right. We'll see you here next you go. time. Here's a, little, here's a little token of my, now you know yeah. Megan was here. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.